Hello everybody, how is everybody doing? I'm so glad to be back with you today. Look at my little pink cast I've got on now, hard as a rock. I'm bumping into stuff and Gizmo starts barking because he thinks somebody's knocking at the door. <laughs> but anyway, um, I got this put on uh, last week. I have to leave it on for four more weeks, I think. And this is a heavier cast than what I had on before. What I had on before was like a... It was like something molded and hard on the bottom, but it was more like uh, the wrapping around it and around it and around it. But this is hard, hard, hard. But I was amazed at the way they do them now. They don't do that plaster stuff and everything. They use this tape stuff, and it sets up big time. So anyway, this is how I'm going to be for the next few months, but I am doing well. I have my glasses on today because I go tomorrow for right eye cataract surgery. Then I go in a couple weeks after that for my left eye cataract surgery. And then maybe I won't need glasses anymore. At least they won't be this thick. See how thick these are? You know, in a way, I know this is gonna sound stupid because I wear these big thick glasses and I have since third grade and I probably needed them before then. My mom and dad just didn't realize. But um, I feel like, you know, my bad vision is a part of me, you know, it's a part of who I am, and giving up my glasses on one side is going to be great, because I won't have to deal with them, I won't have to deal with the thickness of them, and trying to pick out a frame, and it's just horrible, but it's part of who I am, too, and I know that sounds crazy, but they've always been a part of me, even if I wore contacts, I always had my glasses, first thing on in the morning, last thing off at night, literally, I cannot see without them. My vision's very bad. So I go to, cat. I have to wear them, what I was going to tell you, is I have to wear these to let my eyes rest for like a week or so before my cataract surgery. So uh, that's why I've got my glasses on today. Um, but anyway, just pray for me that my surgeries go well. I feel like I've been asking for prayer so much and I used to didn't ask at all. <laughs> it's like I'm falling apart. <laughs> But hopefully, as far as I'm aware, this is all that I'll have. And after my cataracts are done, I hope, you know, and then I'll have the rest of this to deal with. But then that should be it, and I shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So thank you for your prayers, and I really appreciate it. Uh, another thing before I get started, we're going to be in the book of Luke. If you want to get your Bibles and go to chapter 13 in Luke, I'm going to do a couple of different devotionals out of that book this morning. So if you want to do that, um, you can get your Bible. Uh, your Bible and paper and pen if you want. I don't know if you'll need it. Maybe a highlighter or something if you want. It's not going to be real in-depth, but I'm um, using my uh, A Woman After God's Own Heart Bible today. It's the New King James Version. So anyway, while I'm talking about that, I had a subscriber, sweet, sweet, sweet Desiree, sent me some Bible tabs. And I want you to look at them. Aren't they cute? Can you see them? Yeah, see? See? And they are soft. She was talking about how soft they are. And they are real soft and pliable. They went on so easy. Maybe if I put the cover down, you might can see it better. There. But they are really so good. And I love them. And I put them on. Oh, and, and the pattern, I'm start, I'll start to tell you. The pattern matches my planner. You know how I have my planner? This is my planner that I always use. This is the one that stays at home most of the time. It's the one I always use. The one that has all my stuff in it. Well, anyway, I love the colors in this planner. So, anyway, when I used to go get my nails done, I would take that and have the colors matched up to a couple of colors in that. Well, she screenshotted that, I guess, and made me some Bible tabs to match my planner. Isn't that cool? And that's also, uh, that print is also the back screen on my telephone. So I just love that print. And I thought they went really, really pretty with this Bible. So that's the Bible I put them on. So I thought it was really pretty. And thank you so much. Um, she had, her name is Desiree. And she has a shop called The Pain, P-A-Y-N-E, Station. And she makes all kinds of goodies. So if you want to check her out, that'd be great. And I had another, Carol S., sent me 
a, a Bible bag full of all kinds of goodies and journals and cards and stickers and all kinds of stuff. And I appreciate that so much. You all are so thoughtful and kind. And I don't check my post office box a whole big lot as far as every day, I mean. I check it every one to two weeks or I try to. So anyway, I just wanted to let you all know that, that I do appreciate it, and uh, I, I really, really, really do, and you all are so precious. But let's get on into the book of Luke in chapter 13. Okay, I lost some place. <laughs> okay, here. I got Bible tabs. <laughs> it's easier, ain't it? <laughs> okay, I got the book of Luke chapter 13. Now, we're going to talk about the lady that was all humped over for so long in her life. She couldn't stand up straight. And I just couldn't imagine going through life that way. That had to be a horrible, horrible, horrible. In verse 1, in chapter 13 of Luke, it says, There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Now, this is talking about forgiveness of others and second chances in this particular devotion. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all the men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The devotion says, not many people will give you a second chance, but God does. His forgiveness is limitless. All you have to do is come to him with a repentant heart when you sin. Always examine yourself and ask, why am I sorry? Is it for getting caught or for giving into temptation or for disappointing God? It's always difficult to admit the mistakes that we've made. Yes, it's a painful process, but necessary if we want to obey the commandment of Jesus. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. When you approach God for his forgiveness, go to him with a completely exposed heart. Be honest and remorseful as you identify your sin. Then rise up and go forward once again, knowing your sins are forgiven. Trust God, who can and will give you the grace and strength to do what's necessary to make things right and help you live with any consequences of your actions. You can say with Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, I am humbly asking you to forgive me for my sins today. Only you can forgive my sins. Make me clean and whole and give me yet another chance. I praise and thank you for your grace that gives me second chances. Amen. Isn't that true? Okay, now we're going to hop on down to verse 10. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands, hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come to be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day, the Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who's, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, as his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So he did that on the Sabbath. But she deserved it, right? Right. The devotion that goes with that, it says, Can you imagine suffering for 18 years? Jesus, in his great love and compassion, could not let the tragedy of this woman's illness continue any longer. He reached out his healing hands and laid 
them tenderly and powerfully on her bent back and made her whole again. This woman's suffering and subsequent healing provided the world an opportunity to glorify God. There is more than one kind of suffering, and Jesus stands ready to release you from yours. The Savior offers you the possibility of relief now, but even if the suffering continues on this earth, he's promised complete healing in eternity with him. Amen. And that's wonderful to know. There'll be no more broken wrists, no more bad vision, no more hearing loss, no more bad teeth. No more sinus infections, no more stomach illnesses, no more cancer, no more Alzheimer's, no more fibromyalgia, no more depression, no more anxiety. It'll be a wonderful, wonderful time in heaven. We all get to heaven as long as you're saved and you've repented of your sins and you believe in God. We're going to go to heaven and we'll all be there together. Well, that's my devotions for today. I just wanted to check in with you and tell you hi and that I so appreciate all of you. And yes, I got my hair cut off. I did it just a few minutes ago. I went to the beauty shop, salon, whatever y'all call it these days. <laughs> and I had it cut off. At first, I think she was a little t intimidated. I hadn't went to her before because I had the longer hair. And she's like, are you going to cut real short? You know, I think she's like, oh, this lady's going to be so mad at me when I cut her hair off. But I showed her pictures of what I was trying to achieve. And that's why I said, it's fine. I've had short hair before. I'm not scared about it or anything like that. I just have one arm, and I can't do my hair with one arm. And it, I couldn't get it in a ponytail. I couldn't do nothing with it. I was over it. This is so much cooler. It feels so much better. And, you know, I'm so thankful that it was not my right hand that I broke. But I'm going to tell you, you use this other hand more than you think you do to stable things and use it for things and it's, it's hard, but anyway, I love y'all, and I hope y'all have a good day, and remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more, because laughter's the best medicine, and I hope to see you all back here really, really soon, and thank you for everything. I appreciate it. God bless. Bye-bye.